Good morning, everybody. Well, the legacy media, also known as yellow journalism, wishes to rehash an old story from 2016. Take a look at this opinion piece from CNN, which they put on their politics. That was decent of them. Tax bombshell reveals Trump's image is a sham. What do you think of Trump's image? I think Trump's image is that of a successful businessman, a billionaire who knows how to spend a dollar or two. But CNN wishes you to believe that Trump isn't nearly as successful or as rich as you, he would like you to believe. New York Times, Trump's taxes show chronic losses and years of tax avoidance. You see, CNN can't even do their own research. They're taking an article from New York Times and putting an opinion piece out under their own byline in an attempt to think that this is something that CNN has dug up. But let's go on with this, at least for a little bit. A stunning New York Times expose of the president's tax returns Sunday revealed a pitifully inept businessman and a serial tax avoider crushed by massive debts that could expose him to conflicts of interest given his position as president and power to help undisclosed lenders. Of course, he wishes to keep his business private. He doesn't wish them to go under the microscope like he has. And pitifully inept? Hmm. Let's get into that momentarily. And serial tax avoider? Notice how they said tax avoider and not tax cheat. He pays some of the best accountants in town to keep his taxes to the minimum amount the law allows. Do you think President Trump is the only one who does that? I would, I would dare say that anybody with, a, let's go with a total wag here of say five million, anybody with an asset of over five million dollars, pays tax accountants to keep their taxes to a minimum. Now, I'm not in favor of this corrupt federal income tax system, but it is what it is. Congress won't enact tax change, and it's up to Congress to do it. They're the ones who make the laws. The reason President Trump doesn't have to pay taxes, you can thank Congress about it. Let's petition Congress to change the tax laws to make taxes fair for everyone. That isn't President Trump's doing. That's Congress's doing. And everybody seems to think that President Trump inherited a lot of money. And, and he's not going to say how much he did. Let's go to a source I've used before. I have no idea how accurate they are. I actually looked at several different sources, and some of them have President Trump inheriting well over $400 million. Let's go to PolitiFact next. This story goes back to March 7, 2016. If CNN wishes to drag up a story that's four years old, let's go to four-year-old sources. Now, back in 2016, Rubio said, he talks about these great businesses that he built, Rubio said. He inherited over 100 million. And Trump interjected, wrong, wrong, wrong. Trump added, first of all, I got a call from my sister and brother tonight, and they said, we had no idea dad gave you 200 million. Believe me, I started off with 1 million. I build a company that's worth more than 10 billion, and I say it not in a bragging way, but that's the kind of thinking we need. Did Trump inherit over 100 billion, as Rubio said on the March 3 debate? 
we are not rating the statement on our truthometer. <laughs> they didn't want to slam Rubio. <laughs> Let's go on a little bit more. We asked a Rubio spokesman for his evidence that Trump inherited more than 100 million. Rubio cited an even higher number of 200 million. Hmm. Seems like they didn't have any evidence. They were going with wags even wilder than mine. And where would he get this 100 to 200 million dollars from? I guess from his father's estate. Let's go on a little bit more. But news reports show that it's a bit of a mystery how much Trump inherited from his father, Fred Sr., when he died in 1999. Well, by 1999, President Trump was already a very successful businessman before his father died. He was already being touted as a billionaire before his father died. He really didn't need his father's money at that time to add too much to what he already had. And the New York Times states his estate has been estimated by the family at between 250 and 300 million dollars. Now his father had six kids and other family members he probably had codiciles in there for charity and for people that had worked for him for a very long time. So let's say at a best guess that President Trump probably inherited in 1999, I, I remind you, probably around $50 million or so. And if you say it's that's still a hell of a lot of money, well... That's nothing compared to what he's worth now, or even what he was worth at the time in 1999. Sure, $50 million was a nice little boost to him that helped him create even more wealth. We're talking about CNN's story here and how they said his image was a sham about how he wasn't worth much. Let's go on to a third source, also in 2016. This is from Curb.com. And it wants to show you President Trump's real estate map. Let's take a look at how much real estate President Trump had in 2016. And probably how much he still has now or thereabouts. First we have the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. We know he still has that because, well, Congress wanted to impeach him for owning that hotel because people stayed in it. The Trump International Hotel in Chicago. In fact, if you're like me, you didn't know he had most of this real estate. Let's go on and on and on. Here's a golf club that President Trump probably doesn't visit very often because I don't remember seeing this one ever making the news. Maybe it's because too many congressmen visit it. Another golf course. Yet another golf course. Property in California. I hope he sold. This is just a simple house he owns in Beverly Hills worth a mere nine million. One of his many houses, this one in New York. His current registered domicile, the Mar Ar Lago Club in Florida. <laughs> so New York State can't even try to get him for any taxes anymore. He's moved domicile. Good job, New York. You could have had a billionaire in your backyard, but you chased him away. In fact, New York City seems to be chasing away all its wealthy right now. And if he ever gets tired of Mar-a-Lago, there's this 
West Palm Beach Club that he can go to to play golf in. He even owns a piece of Las Vegas. And the Doral in Miami. That is a huge property he has. Now, I've heard of Bedminster before. I didn't know that President Trump owned it. Yet another golf course. He seems to have a lot of these things, doesn't he? And yet another one in Hudson Valley. And <laughs> of course, he owns a golf course in L.A. He can golf anywhere he wants to in the United States. He appears on his own golf courses. And one in Philly. And one in Charlotte. Another one in Florida. And, of course, he owns his own winery. Now, I've had and bought wine from Virginia before. It's surprisingly good. I've never bought any wine from... Whoa, wait a I was going to say I never bought any wine from the Trump winery, but it says this is formerly the Cluj Estate Winery and Vineyard. So I think I may very well have drunk some Trump wine if it still goes by Kluge Estate Winery. Two private homes in Palm Beach. And the final thing, Trump's New York real estate empire. They won't even go into quite how many places he owns. It's, it goes into how many places he's owned and sold in the past. Who knows how much property he owns in New York City. Now we've gone over Trump's real estate holdings as listed by Curb.com in 2016. Has your image of Trump changed any by viewing all these articles? I know mine has. He's even wealthier than I thought. <laughs>